Hello guys, welcome to this tutorial series on EMV. My name is Derek Ben Yu and I'm a hardware software engineer. Today I will be talking as promised about commands and responses EMV cards use. First we will see the general format of a command application protocol data unit. In short, a CAPDU and a response APDU. We shall also see a list of commands specified by ISO 7816. Next, we shall go directly to a demo session where I will show you some practical scenarios on what happens, for example, when a card is inserted in a bank's ATM. A command APDU consists of two main bodies or two main fields, if you like. One is the header. It's a mandatory header, which is always four byte long. It is made up of four different components, each of which is a byte long. And those are the class, the instruction byte, the instruction parameter 1, in short P1, and the instruction parameter 2. The next field is the conditional body field. It has a variable length depending on the command. It contains the length of the coded data, the LC, the data and the length of the expected data. So this is the data here and the land of the expected. That is B. That's going to be the land expected in the response. In case where the land expected is zero, it means a response with a data of land between zero up to 256 bytes is expected. <clears throat> here are two tables of commands. The one on the left is taken from the EMB specification. It specifies the class and some instruction bytes with X as don't care. They can per default be replaced by zero or four. Or C for secure messaging. The table on the right is an implementation by PayPass, for example, for the M chips. Those are the MasterCards chips. You notice here that the X has been replaced by either 0 or 4. We're going to get into that in more details in maybe next videos, but for now, I'll just keep it simple. <clears throat> now it is worth mentioning that every chip manufacturer can extend the predefined commands and even add more. So if you are developing, so if you are developing a payment terminal, you have to specify the cat that can be used. If not, you will have to implement server specification and then provide a way of selecting the card type to be used before any transaction. Now over to the response format. Similar to the command APDU, it is made up of two main parts, the body and the trailer. So the body is a conditional part that depends also on the command. And the trailer is made up of two main bytes that gives the status of the transaction. So after a command has been sent to the card, the card responds with some data if it's expected, and then also respond with the status. So in most of the cases, we'll either see a normal successful status, that is 9000, or a response with a warning that starts with a status byte of 62 or 63. These X's are just don't care. We're going to get into that in details when we start working more with demos. And then I will explain more about this, their meanings and why are they necessary. So for my demos, I will be using a PSOC 4 chip from Cypress. That's actually the reason why I haven't been uploading videos because I was trying to get to a point where I can actually start doing demos on the hardware. And I'm right at that point right now. So I'm sorry for the lateness and all the delays. If you've been waiting for the more videos. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. So for those of you who know the PSOC, it's a really nice platform and the creator software is also really nice to implement stuff 
so it can really help you to go very fast in programming your application rather than learning how to go along with the platform and also it's very good at debugging there is a debug actually you can also get at a relative cheap price i think at about six or twelve euros depending on where you are and uh, yeah so i got this one for about six euros and yeah it's just working the way i want it to work okay um short about my system Mm, we're talking today about um, C APDUs and R APDUs, and I earlier spoke of those fields, the header field. This is a structure. It's a C from the C world. If you're not from the C programming world, don't be scared. It's still the same, even in Java or Python, whatever you use to program. So, like I said, it is made up of four bytes: the class, the instruction, the P1, and the P2. And the uint8 is just a uh, 8-bit character. And um, yeah. And then the body of the CAPDU, it has the coded length, the data. It can go between 0 to 265 and 56 bytes, and the length expected from the response. So this field is just a field I use within my code to 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 um, check if my length coded and expected by are valid we're gonna see that in the next video about the protocols there are two types of protocols the t1 and the t0 protocol so i will make another video about that that's when this one will become clearer but for now you can just ignore it okay um for yeah, the main C APDU type is made up of the header and the body. The command type is also what I use within the code to know exactly what command I'm dealing with. You know, there are a lot of commands like I show you on the table. And programming all that to know exactly what command is coming from a, a terminal or an ATM is not that easy. So we're going to talk about that too later when I start talking about the protocols. Okay. Moving on to the response APDU type, it is made up of a conditional body and a trailer. So this body is defined up here. It has this data. And I also use the D, the D length to give exactly how many bytes have been stored in this array. There are different ways of doing things, but I decided to make it a static array and then just use this length to know exactly how many bytes I have in there when I have to use them. Yeah, so for this demo, I'll be showing you guys uh, how to select the payment system environment, short PSE. It's one of the first things um, that's being done when a card is inserted in a terminal. And also we're gonna do a read record. Okay, this is the main program. It's already in the debug mode. And uh, yeah, on my table, I have my EMV card, my bank card, it's a master card inserted in the slot. Yeah, I'm just gonna let it run and then we'll see. Okay, now it's running. And I have a breakpoint in a function. Exactly this one. Okay, this is the call stack. I don't know if you're from the C world also and you know about debugging, but that's exactly why I decided to spend this much time and then do it on the hardware so you can set breakpoints and debug and then show some variables and explain exactly what they're doing. So the call stack here is exactly showing the functions that have been called. It starts in the main and then uh, select PSE is to select the payment system environment function that's been called. So if I go in there, you're going to see here that I am building my command APDU that I call the select PSE APDU. And you see the header here, the class is 0, instruction is A4, P1 is 0, 4, P2 is 0, 0. You can check that online or you can check that also on the slides on the table that I showed you. Or you can also check it in the specification. So this is the select instruction to select whatever you want to select 
So in this case, I'm selecting um, the payment system environment. According to the specification, it may exist in every card. So there are ways that terminals will always want to find out exactly what application is in a card. One of the ways is by trying to select this PSE. And if it doesn't exist, then you can try to select application according to their ID. So you have to implement say some static IDs that you suspect that a card or any card that you're using in that region must have and then just iterate over them until one of them is being selected. Okay. But most of the cards that I have they have this PSE. Okay, let's just go about it and see what it talks about. And then for the body I have the length the coded length is E. That is um 14 and this is the length so indirectly let me show you guys here this is the name of the pse ipsys.ddf01 that is the name that is uh, specified in the specification so this is the value in um, hexadecimal that is exactly what i'm trying to select in the card and then I give a length expected as zero. That means a card can respond to me with data up to 256 bytes. And then I'm saying here that my LC and LE are valid. This is in the case of a protocol. And this is a very good example because I'm using another protocol that is the T1 protocol. And it's a little bit different than a T0. But I won't go into details right now in order that not to confuse you. Okay. Um, yeah. This command is sent to the card using this, um, either this protocol or this one. In this case, we're using this one. I'm gonna make another video on how to determine which protocol is um, supported in, in each card. The specification also specifies that a card may support either of both protocols or even both of them. So this card that I'm using right now is supporting the T1 protocol. So I call this function go in there and then do all the transaction and then I got the response from this line which I parse them and put them in my response so right now my response this is it here the trailer first of all shows the status byte and if you check on the slide that I want that I showed you before you see that this is a, a successful transaction and the body you see this is the length of the data that I have in there I have 26 hex that is um, 38 so this is the response that I got if you check my first video I I made an example on how to decode the file control information template so the file control information is the response that you expect from any card with a select command so it gives this, it starts with this tag. I'm gonna go over it again. The 6F is the FCI template tag. It has a length of 24 bytes, that is 36. And it starts with the 84. 84 is the definition file name. It has a length of E and this is the whole definition file name. So it's actually telling you that it has this um, payment system environment. And then the next tag is the A5, which is the FCI proprietary template. You can check on the first video and see the table that I told you that you should always keep it by your side. That is the key. And the length is 12 hex. That is um, 18. Starts also with a 88 tag. That is a SFI short file ID of the directory elementary file has a length of one and the ID is five. We're gonna use this ID too for the next example. Okay, and then the next tag is a 5F2D, has a length of four, the 5F2D is a language preference and you see that my card supports DE is German and EN is English. So that is how you decode all this information from the card. Okay, this is the response and then up to the length was um, 26 hex that is 38 up to 
37. So these are the data bytes that I received from the response. Now everything is good and fine. Okay. Um, next we're gonna do the read record. So what I do now in this select PSE function, excuse me, I give it a, a, a global variable, the EC card. And in the EC card, I'm able to save my short file ID, which I just got in this response. This is in here, five. And I'm gonna use this five to read the data of the application elementary file in that PSE, in the payment system environment. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do here. So I'm just going to put, uh, there's still a breakpoint there, I'm just going to let it run. And then we'll see from the call stack that we're reading the record right now. And the ID of the short file, ID is 5 that we're reading. And you see here that my protocol is the T1 protocol and we are still in this transaction. So we've sent the command and then got the response from the card. And now we just put them in this response field. Okay, first the trailer, sorry, first is the trailer, 9000 showing that it's a successful transaction and then the length is 22 bytes and then the data is all in here and this is the template that you get after a read record. So I won't go into that to decoding everything. But some of the things that are very important in that record is the application ID with a tag 4F and has a length 7. And this is the A00, A0004010. So in the first video, you check it, you see that the application ID is made up of two main fields, the RID and the ProfiteX uh, ID extension. The RID is five byte, it's always mandatory. And the ProfiteX extension, these are the two bytes, can be up to 11 bytes. Okay, and uh, you also have the uh, prefect name, you see here is a MasterCard can easily read all that and then here are some tags that you can check on the table so you see everything works pretty pretty well in this case and it goes very fast yeah um i won't show you i will not show you all the uh, demos of the different uh commands and response because i'll be using them too in different videos while i'll be using to explain maybe the protocols or some other things but that is exactly just how it works. I hope you understood everything. If you have some questions, just drop a comment and then I will answer.